Hi, in this video we will talk about how to create some comparison charts where we need to compare the target versus actual sales. A typical chart could be something like this, where you have the actual and then the target for, um, for, for let's say for uh, year 2018 and 19, and that's a, a fairly simple way of doing it. The other way could be a chart like this. So in this video, we will try to see how we can generate a chart like this, where we, we can compare the, the target versus actual. So the red line or the red bar is the actual target. And then we can clearly see that um, the target has been exceeded or the target has not been exceeded. So let's start working on these kind of charts. So to get started, we would be using two libraries or packages, ggplot and dplyr. So the first method is, is very simple. We just get the data. Let's say we have the data, which is three columns, three rows. We have the year, the actual sales, and the target sales. Because we want to create two column charts or bar charts next to each other, I would melt the data using the reshape melt command and using the year as the ID. So if I look at the melt data, so the year is in the first column. The second column is the variables where we have actual versus target and the values are shown there. So using this data, I would simply create a, a normal chart. So this is the first chart which I showed just to compare uh, the actual versus the target. The second method is the horizontal lines which we just um, had a look at it, that earlier. So if I have the data, which is DS again, I would need to create another column in that. So I'm just going to create a sequence based on the row names. So if I run this, you would notice that I have now four columns. So it's just a running number from one, two, three onwards. Now I'll start creating the, the bar chart. So the first line is I have the, the data equals ds. x would be the sequence, the, the, the new column which we just created. And y is the actual column, so the column which has the actual values. And we need to fill it by the year. And in the next line, I need to add the jom bar. So we're using stat equals identity. That means it's actually going to pick this value, whatever is the Y value for uh, our data here. It will pick that value. And that's what identity means. So if I create a chart, you have the chart which actually shows the actual value. Okay, that's not our aim. Our aim is to show the target values as well. So using the JOM segment, we can create the horizontal bars. Now to explain how the horizontal bars are being created is because of the JOM segment. And we are saying that X should be sequence minus 0 0.45. That means the leftmost position here. And the X end or the right hand side corner of X is the sequence plus 0.45. Now, what's the significance of this 0 0.45, 0 0.45 there? The idea is that a, a bar consists of 90% of the of the available space. So it's, if you make it as width one, so I'll show you how it works. If I make it as width equals one, you would notice that the chart doesn't have any space between the, the bars. So the bars are like occupying 100% or the full value of the space. So the width equals one means this. Now, if I go and reduce the width to 0.9, it's working fine because by default, if even if you don't specify the width, 
the actual width it occupies, the one single bar occupies is 90 or 0.9. That's why 0.45 because from the center we want to go half that way and half that way. So the half of 0.9 is 0.45. So we are saying x minus 0.45 and then we are saying x plus 0.45. That's how the, the, the length of this bar is being arrived at. And the y value is the target value. So the target stands there, or target stands there, or target stands there. This is the value. For example, in the first bar, our target is 5,000, which is the red bar. But the actual value was 5, 2, 3, 4. So we actually exceeded our target in the, in the first year. Now, if I reduce the width to 0.8. Now the bars have gone a bit longer, so I can reduce it by simply making it half of that. Okay, with that concept out of the way, let's start finalizing our chart. So the first thing is to get the theme classic. I'm using the theme classic to get rid of all those uh, gray areas in there. And then the next thing is, if you notice that the labels which we have created has one, two, three up there. That's not what we want. We want to show the actual years. So after this theme classic, I'm going to put this line saying scale x conti continuous breaks equals ds dollars sequence. So we need that sequence one, two, three to be as the breaks, but we want to replace the labels by the year. So labels equals ds year. So that should do the trick. So yeah, we got the years there instead of sequence, which was one, two, three. And now let's talk about fixing. How do we fix the other labels around the, the chart? So in just one single line, I have put some labels there. So I've given a title, I've given a subtitle, I've given a caption, which appears at the bottom right hand side and fill is this label so saying that fill should be ears and the x label x x axis label and the y axis label so if i run the whole plot so this is what we get so we have everything customized now and our bar charts are um, showing the, the actual versus the target values Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.